construction, golf news, equipment, travel, interviews, course profiles, and more. Your weekly fix of all things golf is about to begin. It's the Flagstick Podcast with your hosts, Jeff Bonner and Scott McLeod. Well, welcome in, everybody, to the Flagstick Podcast. I am uh, one of your hosts, Jeff Bonner, and the other one is this guy, Scott McLeod. And uh, obviously, the Flagstick Podcast brought to you this week by the Canadian Pro Shop Online. Uh, holiday season is here. Time to gift the give, give the gift of golf. Um, oh, yeah, I know. Introducing the Clubhouse Clubhouse Golf Box, an amazing gift for the golfer in your life. Loaded with outstanding products and top brands. Simply choose the essential or premium box. Pick the ship date. And we they will fill the box for you with enticing products and ship it right to you or your lucky recipient. Give uh, golf gift giving made easy. Get yours and browse for other great gifts at Canadian Pro Shop Online. Good lord, tongue, that was tongue, tongue twister. My apologies, <laughs> Canadian Pro Shop Online, for me trying to read something I've only read about twenty times now. I should have that figured out. Um, be sure to uh, be following us across all social media networks, Instagram, X, Facebook, Scribble, Twitter, whatever. <laughs> Tick, TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> subscribe on Spotify, Audible, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. And we do encourage you, of course, to subscribe to YouTube channel. Like us and click the notification bell and make sure that you never miss a single episode. I'm going to download Scribble over here. <laughs> I know. I just, I'm making, I'm making crap up now. I almost, see, I almost swore now too. This is going to be a great podcast. I can oh, feel it right are, now. We, we are, are both high energy. <laughs> it's not, it's not a good situation. You're dealing with some uh, ailments. Uh, obviously took a volleyball in the face. That's really always a good thing. Uh, good. I've got a shoulder issue, but that's my old age kicking in and, God knows what's uh, going on there. Um, not, a, not enough yeah. coffee in the world today. Let's just no, say that. No, but I hey. need something in the coffee to kind of uh, curb some <laughs> of the pain I'm in right now. I said, Maybe. Uh, I could have canceled myself doing the podcast today. I'm like, it's my shoulder that hurts, not my mouth. So it's, it's kind of hard. Last night, I had an excuse not to go to hockey practice. I had to tell the other coach, sorry, I can't come to hockey practice. I can skate, but I can't hold on to a stick. So I'm not going to be very good out there. Yeah. I'm not very good out there anyway, but that's beside the point. <laughs> that's all good. It's, it's not even really looking like winter. Yeah, have you guys got a bunch of snow up there? Uh, there's, there's snow on the ground. I mean, the roads okay. are perfectly clear. My driveway's clear. There's some snow. It's lots of grass still showing. Okay. It's not really a, a winter wonderland looking, but it is kind of chilly. I know it went yeah. down to like minus 16 or something last night. Wow. And it's supposed to get to five or six tomorrow. It's such a contrast to the other end of the province. I mean, Barry mm -hmm. Forth at Cope Down Woods was open. Is that they're week. open Friday, Saturday, yeah. Sunday this week? I'm like, yeah. What the heck? It was open last weekend. I think James Duthie got the first tee time. He was out there before dark. Duffy. <laughs> uh, dude, dude's a golf ball. I mean, a great, great guy, but he is definitely a golf ball. Um, and I think he's probably, he's probably trying to play this weekend too. I say that with all the great, all, with all due respect is the thing I, I that do. we, the thing that yeah. we say before we, we say something that is <laughs> full, far from respectful. <laughs> Sorry, know, James. It's Duffy. Sorry. We're just, we're just poking a... fun. You know how it goes. Oh, it's you all You two good. are in the broadcast media business, so you <laughs> understand. Just, yeah. I, Everything I you do is fair game. That's I, all I, I'm saying. Everything I, you do. I chirp him about his wedge game and stuff now, even though, you know, I had a crack at, uh, you know, helping him out with a little bit when we played earlier this year, but I still get to chirp him about it. So there you go. It's, it's you the go. Weak, it's it's the weakness in his armor more than anything. But yeah, it's it's uh, it's good to see. I mean, there's some courses that are still open down there, and and uh, our guest uh, last week actually slipped down to New Jersey and got four more rounds in uh, Melvin Lee. So had some good feedback on that story. A lot of that people, dude's a diehard right there. Uh, he he is, and it was funny because he uh, he's he's going to be listening to this, but he messaged me and he's like hey uh what do you think about taking a trip down to like new york in like january february and i'm like oh man i mean yeah lots of stuff going on can't really make that happen and i don't know yeah, that could be pretty dicey but yeah i don't i don't know if i'm that passionate right now about about the game in that kind of weather just i apologize for anybody watching on youtube that happens to occasionally see my hand just kind of float into the, this yeah i have to keep my my arm upright from time to time <laughs> to avoid pain in my shoulders so sometimes i put it down sometimes you'll see my arms sort of pop uh -oh. up into the screen like uh -oh. and, and that's yeah. that's are you gonna make I, it through grandpa I, right? I i do apologize but that's what it is I, I do have a couple of tylenol in me right now i think i need more 
<laughs> more I than think I, need, I think i need something that's got a little more kick um oh, maybe i'll put a little something in my coffee there we go anyways all right listen what, what um, we got going on we got a good show kind of like a redundant thing to say anymore though we always have a good show uh we're gonna get you caught up obviously we like to do that uh john rom leaving the pga tour the implications of that for other players pga tour q school finals uh begin and and uh, yep. of course we got some um canadians that uh, fared quite well at the uh, grant thornton invitational this past week and on the back nine we're going to continue our uh, golf travel talk from uh, a couple episodes ago Yep. Uh, with some insights on Florida golf travel, mm-hmm. not some a unique pers- destination, but some no. ins- some some insights that maybe maybe we can share with you that uh, yeah. that you might not know. You might know. I don't care. You're going to find out anyway. <laughs> uh, so let's get to the front nine presented by Metcalf Golf Club, a natural setting, a pleasant challenge. Of course, golf season is over, but it is time to plan for next season right now, and obviously for the holiday season. Buy your memberships, join a league, or get yourself on a wait list for a league at Metcalf. Purchase some game packs. They make great stocking stuffers, and they make great gifts for yourself if you want to wrap and put them under the tree for yourself. It's always a good idea. Be ready to hit the first tee uh, this spring with some extra money in your pocket. Visit MetcalfGolf.com to shop for those now. All right. Let's dig into the Grant Thornton Invitational uh, last week in Naples. Did you watch uh, any of this? I did. I did. Yeah. I didn't watch a lot of it. Uh, it was yeah. a busy weekend, but I did watch fun, some though. of it. And uh, I did tune in um, a fair bit on on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, it, it was the first uh, it was the first mixed LPGA PGA Tour event since 1989, as we talked about previously. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was pretty well received from yeah. the, the reaction. Uh, I know we did a we did a poll up on X, had a lot of response back to it. I think 85 percent people were in favor of seeing more of it. Yeah, and one of the funniest things was the first person or one of the first people to respond to the poll was Nancy Lopez, <laughs> which is amazing. And, you know, obviously she wants to see more of it, but uh, you of never course. know. You never know who's, uh, who's digging into those no. stick.com polls. So, but no, uh, of course, but, I think it's yeah. a great, I think it's a, I think it would be a great idea myself. I think it'd yeah. be a great idea to have more events, more mixed events like that. Uh, you know, maybe, Maybe some kind of um, you know uh, match play style deal. Um, mm, you know, um, there's lots of different formats. You I do like this format. Maybe maybe it'd be nice to see something that's a straight up stroke play event. Um, that's not like the three different scenarios. I think this one they do best ball, alternate shot, and scramble. Yeah, so the scramble was first, so that obviously yeah. get every, every, everybody off to a head start. The the last I prefer day. not to see the scramble. Like there's one thing about yeah. with with professionals, I really prefer not to see the scramble because um, they just kind go of. so it just this goes so deep, and then it becomes more of the it, it becomes less of about two people playing golf and more about putting contests. And yeah, I th- I'd rather I see right. more best ball and more yeah. alternate shot. Yeah. I, no. I would say I would say the modified alternate shot on the second day. You know they had to play the second shots of their partners. Obviously they had their own tee box distances they're playing from. It was definitely more challenging, and there was more opportunity for mistakes to happen. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think you're right when you deal with the scramble aspect of it, it's unlikely they make many mistakes off of that when you've got two pros that are you know hitting tee shots and hitting approaches in there. So really hard to separate the teams more than anything where I think <clears throat> the final round format really, uh, really helped that out a bit. But, Maybe uh, even go to something like what we did with the, uh, with the, the flag stick two ball. Mm, you no, know, yeah. we do like, like a, a, mo- stable a modified or... stable for event. Um, yeah. and, and just do that straight up over three days. Yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunities there, but, uh, you know, again, you know, small field here, maybe there's an opportunity for something that's a little bit bigger for a field, Um, you know, 16 teams, uh, you know, 32 players is is pretty tight. I know it's the off season and not all the players are around and available, but uh, yeah, it was fun to watch and not just because. Corey Connors and Brooke Henderson were in the mix there. Which they were right know, there. They were right yeah. there. They just didn't get. They didn't get what they needed coming down the stretch. Yeah, and it's tough. I mean, they were uh, three holes ahead. So you know, Co Co and Day had holes in hand. So a lot of people were getting excited because they were tied. But you know, especially yeah. when you looked at it and you realized that you know Co and Day still had a couple of par fives to play. And, well, and Co went and stuffed it in and uh, on uh, seven on seventeen. Par five. Yeah, on the par five there. Yeah, yeah, she stuffs it in there tight and yeah. and just misses the eagle and it's an, it's an easy birdie, right? So yeah. I mean, 
you know, that that was pretty impressive. She doesn't stick that in there tight, and the birdie putt has a little more meat on it. Then, yeah. you know, things are a little different coming down 18 because 18 is a challenging hole. Yeah. Um, but uh, when she dropped that one in tight, I think that pretty much yeah. sealed the deal. So it was especially over, when you're but... playing a basketball format coming down. Yeah. So, you know, good good for Cohen Day. They picked up a yeah. million dollars. Uh, Corey and, and Brooke uh 560,000 so a little little christmas money there that's all right <laughs> and then uh, nick taylor with uh, ronnie yin they uh finished 8th uh, so they picked up uh 170,000 as well cool. but uh yeah good 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 to watch and um yeah. pnc is is this weekend uh saturday sunday obviously it's going to be the charlie you know and and tiger show uh are you going to watch that at all yes Okay, I will okay. watch that. Yeah, yeah, I will yeah. watch it. I I don't know why. I think I'm more. Okay, to be honest with you, hey, okay, haters gonna hate, but here's the deal. I'm more interested in watching more Tiger right now. Sure, a I really honestly could care less about Charlie. Like, I mean, yeah, I, sure. I do he's not just care. A kid. He's yeah. just a kid playing golf. He's a good yeah. golfer, but he's he really isn't any better than five hundred other oh, kids have... out there yeah and and there's lots that i mean even in that nota Begay event that he he shot what he did and played well there there was a bunch of players uh his age and that were better than he was oh I mean, yeah somebody no, won right. the tournament and it wasn't him so <clears throat> yeah. so i just i know it's charlie woods i know there's some extraordinary things that you know with the pnc that that where he played you know hitting it on the green and two hitting it, you know all these shots and but come on i mean yeah. And you take any really good golfer that age and put them on that stage with Tiger Woods or with their dad, who happens to be a PGA Tour player, and they're going to do exactly the same thing, especially when your tees are jammed way up and you're playing it like a junior golf tournament. So, I mean, yeah. I get that. He's good. No question about that. He's probably going to be really good, and he's probably going to play – well, he's college got all the golf he's somewhere got a, and he's, he's got all the opportunities in the world right exactly so yeah. so when that's the case you know your your path is paved a little bit uh a little bit brighter um yeah. but i'm not really interested in tuning in to watch charlie woods play golf i'm interested in seeing tiger play golf right now you, you, you and know, probably 95 percent of the people that are going to watch yeah. they're not the, they're not there to watch the dailies and the devolves and whatever and and you know the cameras are going to be squarely on tiger yeah um they know that's going to do a lot for the for the ratings and you know just like anyone else we're curious to you know especially after uh, the hero world challenge to see how tiger is going to continue with his yeah. play and whether he can you know retain or or gain any more form going into 2024 exactly um now scott i want to i know we we kind of script this a little bit as to what we're going to talk about sure. but i i do want to leave the rom stuff for now yeah. Sure. I think I want okay. to jump ahead and start because I think we're going to have I think there's going to be some discussion there, yeah, and okay. so Fair I think enough. we'll get into a little bit more of this uh, um, uh, quicker stuff. So let's talk about uh, first of all the fact that we have one Canadian that's made to the final qualifying for the Ladies European Tour. Yep. Uh, and uh, Brigitte the, Thibault. Yeah, Brigitte Thibault. She finished T four. At minus seven in Morocco. The finals yep. start on Saturday. Um, she's a national team member that just turned 25 this week, by the way. Yep. So good luck to her. Yeah. So um, that'll be uh, good to see. Unfortunately, uh, Sarah Riom did not get through. Um, you know, so Brigitte's going to be chasing, I think, 20 full cards that are there. Um, but uh, good on her. She missed out, obviously, getting through at LPJQ school. I think she was done in second stage. So um, okay. good opportunity for her there over in Europe, and uh, and and good luck to her. And we'll we'll uh, we'll have a follow up on that. And just coincidentally, she was the last Canadian uh, to actually win at the Dixie Amateur in South Florida in 2020, right. which is going on and starting um, today. And okay. that's where we're getting to right now. We've got 23 Canadians. 23 Canadians. There, yeah, that's amazing. Which is crazy. Unfortunately, they're dealing with about 100 millimeters of rain scheduled for the next four days. So they don't know if they're going to get in or not. Uh, I had a quick message from Jeff McDonald, who's one of the next gen uh, team um, coaches for uh, for 
next gen team for Canada and he's down there. And yeah, it was, it was rainy. Uh, he sent me a little video. It was not the greatest weather. Uh, they're supposed to have some gale warnings as well, but uh, pretty cool to see. I mean, this event has gotten bigger and bigger. Uh, it's a historic event in Fort, Fort Lauderdale. If people are not familiar, the men's tournament goes back to 1924. Uh, they progressively added other divisions over the years. Uh, but yeah, 16 Canadian women are playing, including uh, Anne Sophie Burgo from uh, the Royal Ottawa Golf Club. If anybody's you know familiar with her, she's had I think three wins already uh, this spring in the in her or sorry this fall in her Florida season, as she calls it. She she's down there uh, playing in the fall, so doing well. Seven on the men's side. Uh, if you want to know all those names and details, we've got them up at flagstick.com. And we've got a link there for the leaderboard as well if you want to follow them. Of course we do. There you go. Of course, of course we, do. we do. Of course we do. Uh, seven Canadians in the field uh, for the for the uh, PGA Tour final qualifying this week. Um, the um, I'll let you rhyme off the names and stuff here, sure. Scott, because you've been kind of following everybody. But uh, oh, yeah. unfortunately, nobody... You know, close to local, us. close, yeah. close to home. Etch, but you know etch, what? Canadian, etch, etch. Canadians, Canadians, Canadian. Yeah. That's all that matters is the, yeah. the more Canadians that can get on the PGA Tour, the more it does for continuing to build and grow Canadian golf. So uh, for sure. um, these seven, couple. good luck to them. But yeah, Scott, we've go got a, that started today. A um, couple of, we'll call, we'll call it some local ties. That's Ian Papineau, who obviously won the Tunis a, a couple of times. Yes. Uh, so he's down there and playing in the final, which is great to see. Uh, Stuart McDonald, who won the uh, PGA Tour Canada event in Ottawa this year. So obviously he's in there. Uh, Yi Sao, who a lot of people are not including him because he's not under the Canadian flag, but this this is a he's a 33 year old that's lived in Delta BC since he's 15. It just so happens that he's born in Beijing. So um, so Yi Sao is there. Uh, Jared Dutrois, uh, people are familiar with him from the 2016 Canadian Open where he was the low amateur at T9. Uh, Sudarshan Yelamaraju from Mississauga played great in second stage. Uh, only 22, lefty, um, talented kid. He'll be fun to watch. Turn pro just a year after high school. Uh, always says he doesn't have a plan B. Plan A is golf, and that's it. But at least he's got conditional corn fairy tour status. Uh, all these guys do for sure going through. And then uh, Thomas Giroux, who's probably the least experienced of the players that's there from Georgetown, Ontario. Uh, just 24, graduated two years ago. Uh, had a not a great season on PJ Tour Canada this year. So this is his chance to get some status, not only PJ Tour uh, Corn Ferry Tour or PJ Tour Americas through through this Q School, and then Miles Creighton, uh, who had a fantastic uh, season, uh, second on the Total Play Cup points list in <clears throat> PJ Tour Latino America last year, played well as uh, in the few events that he played in PJ Tour Canada as well. So uh, you know, a stellar field there. Nice to follow those seven. Uh, as I mentioned, they're chasing. There's five PGA Tour cards available, uh, which is nice. They haven't had PGA Tour cards available at the Q School since 2013, so it's nice to have that back. Uh, then the next squad of uh, about 40 or so will get decent status on the Corn Ferry Tour, and then the ranking just goes down from there as far as conditional status. All of them will have at least conditional status on on the Corn Ferry Tour. It's just a ranking, uh, and the group below that uh, large group that would get good status in Corn Ferry Tour will get PJ Tour America's uh, status. So, you know, it, it's an accomplishment just to get to the finals. It guarantees yeah, for at, least sure. they've, at least they've got a, a job, we'll call it. Some of these guys already have status uh, for next year on the various tours. In most cases, you know, they're just chasing those PGA Tour cards more than anything. So, again, um, all those names up on flagstick.com. And we've got a, a link there to the uh, leaderboard as well. And that started this morning. So, there you go. All right, let's dive into. Um, see, I'm saying dive in, oh, dive no. in. Where are you diving to? I'm diving in because <laughs> I haven't said it in a while, so I'm saying it. Okay. Back off. All right. What do you want to get into okay. next? To get a couple. I of want to talk here. about the um, what everybody else is talking about, and sometimes, even though you don't want to follow the path of all the other media, you yeah. just have to. And in this case, we just have to. John Rahm mm -hmm. officially leaves the PGA Tour and joins um, his uh, Live Golf League. Live Golf starts his Live Golf career. Um, essentially, what John Rahm does is John Rahm leaves the PGA Tour and gets bank. Big time. I mean, yeah. he he's getting paid 
Yeah, we box. don't know the we don't know the number. Nobody knows the well. Somebody knows the number, but it's yeah. not people. We know media. that it's probably stupid, stupid, yeah. stupid money. That's yeah. let's put it to you that way. Definitely. So, um, as I'm kind of warned right here that we've got about ten minutes before we have to take a break. Let's let's do this in ten minutes. Yeah, let's go. Um, so. What essentially him leaving does, let's just start off with that. What that does is it creates opportunities for others, much like when all of the other ones like DeChambeau and Kepka yeah. and Justin Johnson and all these guys left and went to live. All that did is it opened the door for a lot of these players that are sitting on the Corn Ferry Tour and coming up and having low position status on the PGA Tour to, to get into events and get opportunities to play mm -hmm. and, and elevate their status. Now, here's sure. the thing that I always... Um, so, so, um, for instance, Mackenzie Hughes, uh, we noted mm -hmm. moves to 50th in the FedEx and gets access to six more, uh, of, of the, uh, $20 million signature events. Yeah. I mean, Huge. that's massive for, do you think that Mackenzie Hughes gives a crap that John Rahm is gone? Not really. And maybe from a competition standpoint, <clears throat> they all want to play the best in the world. Yeah. But, but at the end of the day, if John Rahm is leaving to, because of money. There's no other reason for any player to leave the PGA Tour and go to live. Oh, yeah, it's just money. Besides money. They talked sure. about, oh, the commitment. Oh, spending more time with the families. Oh, this. Oh, that. Baloney. If that, baloney. If that, was, if, that was the case, if that was the case, just like, you know, Fred Couples and a few people said, they would do it for free. If it, yes. was, that, if it was that attractive to them, it wasn't about the money. And I'm not begrudging. I could care that. less. I, I could honestly could care less. Go. If, if you want to get paid, you're a professional golfer, go. Uh, uh, fine that's, yeah that's okay I, I mean there's no hand wringing about it that's his decision for him and his family that's fine that doesn't that's totally separate from saying you like the live product or whatever this is about somebody going and having that opportunity but that as you say that creates opportunity for others and you know i'm happy for Mackenzie hughes there's a list of other players obviously that you know moved up as a result of that that got their cards or got into different status levels or whatever. And I'm sure they're happy too, because they're getting that opportunity to get paid as well for well, their loyalty for their tour. Here's one of the things that I really, really don't like about this, this whole live golf thing. Okay. First of all, I don't see, I know that there's boatloads of money behind it mm. and, it, and it's, like, it's almost, it's almost endless buckets, but there's no such almost. thing as an endless bucket. No. Okay. At some point or another, the the PIF or whatever it is that's yep. that, that's yep. that's backing it yep. is going to is going to come around and say okay, uh, you know we're not we're just not going to throw big mm -hmm. more a lot more money. This has happened before. They've they've mm -hmm. gotten their, they got into bed with some other um, sporting things. I think they mm -hmm. got into bed with F one. Um, oh yeah, they're definitely. And, uh, they're, and, they're, and then they're they pulled and then they F1. pulled they're money out of that. So what happens? I mean, to me, what what the deal is here is that. Greg Norman is mm -hmm. is has always had it in his butt to stick it to the PGA Tour. Oh, this sure. is like a this is like a, a an agenda for him. Yeah. He sees this as an opportunity to force the PGA Tour to jam more money into the mm -hmm. tour mm -hmm. that it probably wasn't really in a position to do because financially it's just it is the way it is the way the PGA Tour is run compared to the way Live is run. Sure. So the PGA Tour gets forced to inject mega money, and then it looked bad because then it looks like oh they all they, they all well, I guess they always had the money. Where's the money going? <laughs> they never so, had the money. That's so, why they're looking for investors right now. So so there's that, and yeah. and I think that what Liv's doing is it's damaging something that that is still going to be there when Liv is gone. Yeah, but it's and what's be it a... doing to the legacy of these players in the meantime is that they've given them this this endless bucket of cash that that they're basically retirement taken care of mm -hmm. and now these guys are were probably promised that they were still going to get ranking points or they were going to look after that they were going to look mm. at don't worry about it mm. everything's going to be status quo we're going to put it to the pj tour they're going to reach into their pocket and do this and that part of it hasn't happened yet yeah what i don't like is the pj tour trying you know seemingly connecting themselves in some way with with well live. i that, don't like look, that 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 framework agreement's in place i mean here's here's the situation that's happened i mean they have that a uh, framework agreement it's got to be they've got to get a deal done by december 31st if that's going to carry forward in the meantime the pga tour is already dealing with uh, several other parties to look for investments because this is the thing 
the the interruption that occurs because of live forces as you said the pga tour to all of a sudden come up with all sorts of money which they're looking to their sponsors to to do more money but the sponsors are not always going to see the value so here's the issue that happens now we have a company like wells fargo whose agreement finishes in 2024 they have said they're not going to re-up because the price gets too high once we all of a sudden get to a 20 million dollar event and it's going to cost them 25 million as a sponsor they're like mm -hmm, return's not great there we're out there's only so many companies that are going to be willing to do that. So yeah. the sustainability is very, very difficult. And where people don't understand, and we've talked a lot about this before, but this will be my sort of last point on this, is that when we look at an event, we'll talk champions tour in Canada. We look at 11 year history for the Shaw charity classic. They just announced this week that, you know, they went over the hundred million dollars in donation marks. Uh, they're at $112 million that they've donated in 11 years. That's what these events do. PGA tour and champions tour. I'm not, and I'm not saying live has said, you know, they've got some charitable donations and stuff they're doing, but these are things that are going back into the community. So if all of a sudden this massive disruption comes to a tournament like the Wells Fargo or other PGA tour events where they can't sustainably run them, there's, there's, there is a limit to the money. And mm -hmm. while, while players deserve money and deserve to get paid, this is it's an astronomical amount it's kind of like a, a company that's kind of built up with venture capital where they're the company's not actually making any money but people are getting paid based on this money that's there that's not really there so that's the difficulty is the damage that it's, it could do they can have their product they can do whatever they want mm -hmm. players can go and do whatever they want but it's the damage that it ends up doing it doesn't necessarily change the pga tour or force them in the good sense, because that's what a bunch of people think, oh, well, this is forcing the PGA Tour to up the quality of this and have more washrooms out there and do all these other things that, you know, these players are demanding. Guess what? The money is not all there to do that, and that's mm -hmm. not sustainable. So players have to be very careful about how much they're asking for uh, for the job that they do. They're, they're well taken care of. It's a sport where you have to go and earn your money, but it's not realistic to assume that it's baseball money. Uh, no. Golf just does not generate the revenues like those other major league sports do. Well, I think that, that's, that therein lies the big problem is that we're trying to take something like golf, which is an mm -hmm. individual sport like tennis, yeah, and we're trying to turn it into baseball, NFL, football, major league baseball yeah. NBA, hockey, yeah. and those kinds of numbers. Yeah. Yeah, um, are you are you going out and buying a, a a jersey of a certain athlete, and you know, and multiple things that are well, and there is therein lies the problem is that the NHL and yeah. the NHLPA can generate the NHL particularly and the teams can generate revenue to pay pay these exorbitant salaries, right. yeah, by <laughs> excuse me by selling the players, sure, yeah, by selling the franchises, and now maybe these live golf teams, maybe people would be willing to go out and buy a, um, you know, a, an afterburners not, shirt. Not or, I'm not going to, not many. I think I'll that's crazy. That. I mean, it's not a yeah. hockey Jersey. It's just not the yeah. same thing. Golf is, is individual and it's always yeah. going to be treated that way. You can have a team aspect. I have no issues. If the PGA tour wants to create a team environment, kind of like sure. live and, and yeah. have these guys but, have a draft and but the and, but the revenue situation is not there to, no. to get by people in so the only reason to do it would be from an entertainment standpoint so unfortunately there's a bubble here and there's a limitate a limitation of of what can happen yeah. so lots more to come on that obviously yeah, yeah for sure for sure more as far as players we should affirm that tony finau despite the rumors has said he's going to be back on the pga tour next year so good for him uh people don't listen to every rumor that you hear so okay well there you go right. okay um one last thing before we go out. Do you want to get into the holiday thing or do you want to just push that? Why don't we push that? And yeah, we'll yeah, yeah. We'll just we push back. that. We'll, we'll do that when we come back. Okay. So yeah, sounds good. that's all for live for now. Um, we're going to take a quick break. And uh, when we come back, um, we're going to have a little holiday season chat. Just a small one. Yeah. Still a little bit ahead of Christmas here, but we're going to have a little small one. Uh, and we're going to talk a little Florida winter golf. So uh, stay with us. You're listening to the flag stick podcast with jeff bonner and scott mcleod we will be right back the canadian pro shop online has all the best gear for canadian golfers amazing prices on all the top brands in one place the latest drivers irons putters and more the canadian pro shop online is the best gear to help you play your best golf shop online today at canadianproshoponline.com all right well welcome back 
to the Flagstick Podcast uh, with uh, Jeff Potter and Scott McLeod. As always, it is us. Um, and we are uh, got a couple things to discuss here in the back nine. The back nine, obviously, is uh, sponsored by Celtic Golf Center, located 20 minutes from Ottawa in Kempville. Celtic Golf Center is indoor golf at another level, featuring five state-of-the-art trackman simulators and two new unicorn sims with GS Pro. Celtic Golf Center can offer over 10,000 course options, including many major courses and some with island greens and beautiful azaleas. Play rounds with friends, practice uh, with full swing analysis or play games. Whatever your preference, visit CelticGolfCenter.ca to learn more or to book your times. There you go. Andy Andy is hopping. Oh, he is. He's uh, he's got a lot of stuff going on right now. Social media gangbusters. (laughs) I know. I talked to him yesterday. He was on his way. Obviously, he's got the, uh, you know, golfsimulators.ca, you know, his company for building stuff. So he was down in Windsor. He was working his way back past me, uh, stopping in to look at some other stuff. Yeah, dude, dude's dude's rocking it. And that Celtic Golf Center is a fun, fun spot. It is indeed. It is indeed. Okay. As fun as that is, let's talk a little bit. uh, We are, we are in the midst of the holiday season. Um, yes, happy, and, uh, happy Hanukkah for everybody yeah. who celebrates. There you go. And, um, of course, we will probably, I'm thinking next week, uh, do some kind of a little holiday thing. We'll see. Sure, sure. You know, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. But for this week, we just want to talk about one specific thing. As, you know, as things begin to unfold, uh, we always want to make sure that we keep some positivity in this podcast not negativity positivity no, I, I think no, we're I, generally pretty positive as it we is we are but. but but i think i think the thing is is that you know we realize especially in a world that deals a lot with social media uh in the oh. golf space has dealt been a lot of stuff where people are talking about you know things that are controversial and people get you know riled up and there's lots of feelings and there's lots of things thrown around and people have to realize it's still a great golf game and there's a lot more to it. And all the things that we do about this game is because we love it and we enjoy it and we have fun. So we just have to sometimes remind ourselves sometimes that, you know what, there's a lot of good stuff here. Correct. So you said you want to challenge ourselves and share one really positive golf memory from this past year that we had personally. Yeah, exactly. So, and uh, And I encourage anybody else listening to this, to think about it too just go back over yeah. your year start thinking about the year write it down whatever the case may be and share the positive things that happened um because i guarantee you if you go back there were some really bright moments that probably happened during your golf year that more than make up for you know any anger you have towards players going to play in other leagues or you know maybe your golf ball changing or stuff like that. There's a lot of yeah. good stuff that's happening. So what, why don't you go ahead, Jeff, and, and share one of those moments for you? Well, for, for me, it was pretty easy uh, going back. Cause I mean, first of all, I, I, I don't play, I don't play a ton of golf. Mm-hmm. I hadn't, didn't play a ton. I did play more this year than I normally did, but I don't, I don't play a ton. So to pick something that, that really was positive, um, for those that have listened to the podcast and whatnot, they they know that we've talked about my son Brandon and, and his whole uh, hip injury thing that uh, he's recently yeah. had surgery on, and he's doing very well. In case anybody is uh, just randomly in their mind asking how he is, uh, he's doing very well. He's uh, um, should be should be back in the gym and skating and stuff shortly. So, um, but as he was the surgery was approaching. He came to me and he said, look, he said, you know, I know the surgery coming up and I'm not going to be able to play any more golf after, after September 1st. Um, so I'm just wondering, you know, can, can maybe we like play, you know, two courses? Like, I just want to yes. play two courses that I would never like. And, and he gave me the names of the two courses. Some, some and, bucket listers, right? Yeah. Some bucket listers. Just, I want to do this, you know, and, and, and finish my year on a high. And then I've got this surgery and I've, you know, and I'm going to be down so, in the dumps. For so before, months. before you, t- you know, play that out and tell me when he did that, mm-hmm. did that sort of prompt anything in your mind as far as thinking about you and going and playing and taking the time to go play some of those courses that you have had the opportunity to maybe play before, but it's been a while. Yeah. It was, it, it, you know, it kind of, it, it became sort of a, um, 
it became kind of an obsession to kind of figure to to figure out the time to do it and to I had to make time for it. Like it was really sure, something that I haven't done in a while where I've always said, you know, I look at my calendar, go, oh well, you know, Thursday's open, I maybe I'll go play golf. And then you mm-hmm. try to get a tea time, it's like I can't get a tea time. So you you know, and I don't like calling in favors. I mean, you know, you know how I am with, with respect to that. Yes. This is what we've been doing for you know yeah, twenty five plus I, odd I, years. I, I don't like to I'm the same as well. phone somebody up and say, "Hey, it's you know Jeff Sweet Water from on. Flagstick. You know, yeah, yeah, can yeah. you slip me out?" I, yeah. I've, I've never, I've never liked to do that, and I don't think that I really, rarely ever have. Um, yeah. But in this case, it was a unique circumstance, and and Brandon had asked about playing Royal Ottawa and and Hunt Club, um, um, and. That you don't get two more sort of iconic facilities in the Ottawa region than those two. Mm-hmm. Uh, both are private facilities. Both have yep. a lot of members and 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 storied, are busy clubs. Yeah, and are busy old. golf yep. courses. So for me to, you know, so I, you know, I'm like, okay, you know what? We'll see what we can do here. Let's, you yep. know, we'll get this done. So I called in a couple of favors. Sure. Um, now uh, to the. It didn't take much to. No, these are you know, these are I mean, people that you know we've known for a long time. Yeah, very much that so. have that have made offers in the past where you know you, you you sort of bank those. You know, you get offered twenty times by the same person, to and you never and say yes. You just say yeah, yeah, we'll we'll do that. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll do, do that, that sometime. Yeah. So as it turns out, we ended up playing um, three courses or four three courses in in four day stretch, which yep. was more golf I played in the you know in a while. <laughs> We played Smuggler's Glen, which we had played before, but uh, was that the game with us? Yeah, or was that a separate one? That was our. So uh, no, was no, our... that was a separate one. That oh, was okay, separate so one. it wasn't our match when we beat the kids. No, that was a different okay. one altogether. Not, not to not to emphasize that. Yeah, no, I hear what you're Brandon saying. And Shane, you know. So the, this was all the week of his surgery. He was having right. surgery okay. on the September fifth, yep. so we're like, you know, we played Smugglers, and then I had tea time booked to contacted uh, Derek McDonald uh, mm-hmm. at Royal Ottawa who's a good friend longtime friend and and he has a regular golf game that uh, he had with um, his wife Jenny yep. and uh, he said yeah yeah he said why don't you guys come out and play with us so we had that scheduled and then we had another Mark Peterson from uh, um, Ottawa Hunt which reminds um, me, we should have Jenny on the podcast. Sometimes. Yes, definitely. Um, Mark Peterson Derek, from Ottawa Derek, maybe, Hunt. Maybe you too, Derek. But anyway, yeah, well, maybe not. <laughs> um, Mark Peterson at Ottawa Hunt said, yeah. Like he said, uh, how about this time? And it was the day after the Royal Ottawa. So I'm like, okay, this is going to be interesting. Wow. We're doing all this. Yeah. So we went out and we did the uh, – we, we did – and Brandon was really excited about it and went out and bought some new golf clothes for literally two rounds of golf, right? Amazing. <laughs> and uh, – and – we went out and played in the, the Royal Ottawa with, with Derek and Jenny and, and and had just absolutely amazing time playing with them. Jenny is Derek's fun to play golf with, but Jenny <laughs> Jenny is just a hoot to play. Yeah. I'm sure she's a hoot to do anything, you know, golf, go yeah, to a yeah, hockey yeah. game, oh, she, go she out for dinner, golf. whatever. She just she was so much fun. Brandon yeah. had an amazing time, a great time, and I think we played okay, but it didn't really matter. Yeah. Um, and then the next day at the hunt, um, I was hoping that we would have had the opportunity to maybe play with somebody, you know, whether Mark or, or, um, sure. or, uh, Sean, but, yeah. um, but we didn't, we played just the two of us and that was okay. fine, you know, cause that was the last round of golf he was going to play until next season. Yeah. And we played the hunt and it was great. The course was in great shape. The round wasn't too long. The day was beautiful. We enjoyed it. So that was, so for me. You know, to play golf with Brandon and to, to have mm-hmm. that experience of playing those iconic golf courses in this region that he'd never had. I mean, I had played them in the past, sure. yeah, but, but he'd never played play them before. Yeah. And now he's got those scratched off his bucket list. So yeah. whether he eventually wants to go back and play them again, that's great. But at least he, he did them and it happened right before a time where he knew he wasn't going to play again for a while. Sure. So as far yeah. as experiences, uh, that was prob- that was the most memorable golf outing for me last year and probably in quite some time. Yeah, well, you know, it's good that you're able to do that. And I mean, you, you don't always get those moments back. So it's, it's you know, that opportunity that you took and, and now you've got that to share yeah. as far as a memory. It's something you're going to look back kind of for a long time. I mean, I, I obviously play a little bit more golf than you managed to get away on a, you know a few trips and stuff with manufacturers and things like that. But, um, you know, the one that I'll point out this year was just 
you know, when I think about it from a memory perspective, and again, it's about, it's about the joy of the game and feeling sort of back of how you felt about the game when you first started playing. Right. Mm -hmm. And, And it's that, you know, it's that feeling of what, what makes me want to be out here. And, and, you know, we sometimes lose that. We've talked about that you know, extensively in the past, as far as, you know, people kind of losing their way in the industry, they just start doing stuff and they sort of forget why they're there in the first place and and what brought you there. And just so happened this year, you know, I attended a wedding down in Texas and uh, we ended up, uh, our group ended up going to play, you know, a cool golf course, Blue Jack National, which was a Tiger Woods design that, you know, it was the first one in the U.S., but it's a cool private club very laid back, you know, you could wear whatever you wanted. There was, you know, a caddy with the groups, but I mean, they have, you know, beverage stands, they have barbecue out there, they have a fishing club, they have all sorts of different things. And so, you know, it's high end, but it's not like a snooty place. And the cool part is, is that they have a 10 hole short course called the playgrounds. And that was probably the best part. We played the 18. It was great mix of you know touring pros good pros top amateur college players so you know it was just a good day of ribbing nobody really cared what they shot you're you know you're hitting some good shots and stuff like that but the real bond was at the end where we go out on this 10 hole short course is a gangsome and you know we just get a wedge in your hand you bring your putter you know the lights eventually come on because it's getting dark and you're just hitting shots scores don't matter just people laughing we all love golf um, and you know, the picture that I have of going up the last hole with kind of the, the lights are on, you know, the sun has gone down and it's the group ahead of me and I actually stopped to take a picture to think about it from my perspective of what I was seeing. So it was the picture of all these players walking in front of me. And I thought, this is a pretty cool moment. You know, it's just, yeah. you got a, a young guy that's <laughs> going to get married. You got a bunch of friends. And again, they're guys that are playing, you know, PJ Tour Canada. They're going to, about to go to Q school. There are all sorts of stuff going on in their life. But in the end, they're just guys who love golf in this case, or people that love golf that are just, you know, having fun and having laughs and and it's just a reminder of the best parts of the game and not getting bogged down in so much you know negative things that might be happening or swirling around and forgetting that's the essentials part of it it's that bond that's created uh, around the game and the game is just the platform from it it's it's you know it's the mashed potatoes that you can add everything to to create the flavors mm-hmm. and, and everything <clears throat> and and i think it's those moments that even for me looking ahead for 2024, I'm, I'm trying to have more of those in my life. It doesn't have to be, a, you know, I don't have to go to Texas for that to happen, but it's more having those fun moments. And I know as we start to talk about 2024 and, you know, we'll get to more of it uh, in the future, but we're talking about some specific things and events and other stuff that we can do that you know are going to be enjoyable you mm-hmm. know, and they're going to include the people that are around us and others that we've created connections with in you know special moments and special places and it's all about that fun aspect of it just like you had uh you know with with brand in there and i think that's really what it's about and that's at this point right now this is what i'm grateful for as we head towards the you know the end of the 2023 season exactly cool there you go. So yeah. we uh, we do encourage, uh, you know, when we bring up stuff like this, I just want everybody to know when we bring up stuff like this and we talk about our personal experiences, we say, OK, well, what do you think? And oh, what do you think? Well, yeah. we want to extend those that 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 invitation to anybody that's you know, any of you that are watching and listening uh, to the podcast to to let us know, uh, you know, post a comment. Um, tell us, you know, your own personal experience. We'll take a yeah. look at them. And, and we're if, genuinely you know, interested. And, yeah. you know, maybe we read. Maybe we read one or two of them, you know, on one of the podcasts just to say, you know, hey, here's what some other people are doing. Yeah. Maybe if we get enough feedback from it, it becomes a little uh, a little um, editorial piece that Scott puts together and posts on flagstick.com with with some things that some of our listeners or our viewers, mm-hmm. um, you know, experienced that they yeah. thought were cool. I mean, and then that encourages more conversation. So yeah. what we're all about doing here is is. is we get on here with this podcast and we talk about all this stuff and essentially it's all about it's all about you know bringing you up to speed on stuff feeding sure. you full of information and knowledge and encouraging conversation you know when we get that feedback and we get the conversation like we we have those questions on on uh, ask flagstick yeah. and you know 
sometimes those questions are personal of us. Sometimes mm-hmm. those questions are general golf knowledge questions, but we like to get that stuff because then we like to deliver that feedback back out to the masses and it becomes sort of a community content uh, yeah. generation yeah. thing. So understand yeah, yeah, why the, why this stuff exists. It doesn't exist just so Scott and I can hear ourselves talk. No, not at all. And I mean, that's what led into, you know, well, I do like to hear myself talk, <laughs> but that's what led into the interview with Melvin last week, you know, yeah. it's those experiences and, and, you know, I have a, you know, I have a lot, I end up, you know, obviously doing a lot of the, the social media stuff or whatever. And I get a lot of DMS from people that are just asking about particular things. And they're, they're always, you know, some of them are sort of surprised that you actually have an interest in what they're doing, but you know, that's, that's what fuels us. You know, it's that community. It's, it's what everybody else feels about golf. It's just not us spewing information. Um, it's, it's what can we do to make the experience better for the people that are out there? Mm-hmm. And if we can do that, we're doing the job that we've been doing since 1996. Uh, and that's the community. And that's what, you know, that's what our sponsors, that's what our marketing partners want to tap into as well. So, you know, it's a two way street and I, and I hopefully people just keep it coming that way. And who knows, we might end up with, uh, we might end up with more, uh, of our community members on the podcast at some point. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yep. All right, Scott, well, let's talk a little Florida winter golf. This was mm-hmm. uh, sort of your topic, the, your topic that you wanted to, to slide in here, a little, a little golf travel, um, Yeah. run with it, man. Run with yeah, it. So, I mean, you know, we, we've done a lot of trips over the years and really? certainly we, yeah, just a few. <laughs> it's hard to believe. I mean, Florida, for an example, uh, you know, just for the PGA shows alone, hmm. I've spent half a year in Florida based on just on the PGA shows. Half a year of my life based on the PGA shows. Far, just far too in-depth in the stats. Uh, yeah, well, there, my you, friend. Just, you just kind of get reminded of that over yeah. the years, let alone many other trips and stuff like that. But, you know, we do get questions and things all the time. And I know we're not going to get to all the locations here in Florida, so we can sort of start and, and talk about a few of them. But yeah. it, it's it's that personal recommendations. Now, we have to remember some of these facilities have changed, some are closed, some are, you know, there's some other stuff that has happened in some of these locations mm-hmm. and there's more things that are there. But again, and this is what contributes to our communications on social media, our stories that we post up on flagstick.com. And we want to continue to do that. So if somebody's got questions about a particular area, you know, send them our way. But we mm-hmm. just want to give some of our own sort of uh, experience a little bit. And, you know, so let's talk about, I mean, we've had a bunch of them that we've we've had during fall trips, especially where, you know, unfortunately have been hurricane ridden. Um, but I know <laughs> one particular area there when we were, it was during Hurricane Sandy, uh, we were down in South Florida in the Palm Beach Gardens, Port St. Lucie area. Mm-hmm. And now Port St. Lucie and the PJ Village has changed a little bit. The PJ of America, you know, has is divested from that property and, and they're they're created their headquarters now over in Frisco, Texas. Um, but, you know, that facility is still there. Um, but a neat area to go and play, um, you know, a lot of people think South Florida, they're just heading to Miami. Um, it's not the case. There's a lot more outside of that. And, and certainly the Palm Beach Gardens, Port St. Lucie area is definitely, mm-hmm. uh, you know, fun as far as golf and what's available. What were your sort of memories, recommendations, thoughts, or anything around, say, PJ National to start? Do you even remember that? Trip? I remember. <laughs> you know what I remember? I remember, obviously, PJ National and... Uh, um the one round the one round the champion that we course? Did, yeah um i remember parking the cart in uh this was the when the hurricane was was coming yeah and i think it was i don't know if it was it was it which one was our first we had our first round we played two rounds down there at national or village village uh, i think was no no village? no at national national we played uh mm. we played um um we played played the champion, one, the champion then, course. Yeah, and then we played a course that has now been renovated. Right, so the, the champion so, course. Yeah. There was another course that we played where yeah. I, I remember because it was raining. So um, that would have been the what was previously the Fazio course and now is the match course, which okay. is the, the Andy Staples did a redesign right. of that, and it's now a match course. So I remember was- the rain was so intense that we actually parked our cart off the cart path. We pulled it into um a stand of trees like right into the bushes almost oh i think that was actually a pj village that was that was we were playing that we were playing the Wanamaker course 
uh, at oh, PGA Village. Oh, yes, Bill. it was PGA yeah, Village. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, now I got it. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. See, when you play so many... <laughs> When you play so many of these these, these so many trips, they start, they, they start yeah. to blend together a little bit. But yeah, that yeah. was uh, that was quite memorable because I know we've had numerous times our, our road trips in the past have always sort of coincided with hurricane, hurricane season. season. In the States. <laughs> so we have played whether We're it was smart. Virgi- Virginia Beach uh, oh, where yeah. we we played um in the middle of all that crap. Um, then <laughs> there was uh, Frederick. Yeah, then there was, yeah, there was uh, that one. Um, the one in um, out east, uh, where yeah. we're at White Point Hurricane. Resort, Hurricane Matthew. Yep, I and, can name uh, off all the hurricanes that we were in. <laughs> and then, of course, there was the one at uh, the one in Port St. Lucie, where we we actually were supposed to stay the night. Yeah, and we ended up packing up and driving, heading north Just to, to get, get out right there. next to the basically get up where we were flying out. We ended up checking yeah. into a hotel, even though we had accommodations that we didn't have to pay for. We yeah to get out of it so that we didn't have to drive because the hurricane was supposed to drop the next day. And yeah, so we've had some certain, certainly some interesting ones, but that one was yeah. quite memorable. I do recall when we played the bear trap, that was, uh, mm-hmm. uh that was pretty awesome too. Um, yeah, it's a great facility. That. I mean, uh, you know, the accommodations were good there. The dining was good there. They've, they've continually kept doing renovations there at, at PGA national. And obviously when well, most people will know it from, you know, being the host course, of the Honda classic, which, you know, is, is gone now, but you know, it's still iconic as far as playing, you know, those holes, um, definitely worth playing as far as that, that facility. I'd like to get back and see that match course. Uh, yeah. cause that sounds fun. There's no real tee boxes. You just go and you, you pick your, say, Hey partner, where are we playing? You pick your spot and you go, mm-hmm. and it's, you know, it's your score against the other person. So, you know, it's a worth going down there. A, a lot of people will assume, you know, South Florida, especially when they think about, you know, Jupiter area and stuff like that. It's sure. It's a haven for a lot of private clubs. There's many, many private clubs, but there is some decent public golf that's down there. Uh, Palm beach, out Fort worth or Fort worth. Um, uh, out in Palm Beach, Lake Worth, um, yeah. there's there's a couple of part three courses that are down there. They're really high quality to play. Uh, as we mentioned, PJ Village is not far away from from PJ National. Uh, they got the die course there. I think we both really enjoyed the die course at that one. They have three yes, golf courses much. that are there. Um, formerly had the 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 PGA Museum that was there, but again, lots of accommodations down there. Good range facility. You know, so you you can get a lot of practice and stuff in. So yeah, so if you're the heading... different sand that they had uh, down there, yeah. remember they had the, they they had the sand traps sand. from all the different types of sand that you could practice yeah. out of. Which is not yeah. something I know. Um, Udaway used to have something similar to that in their mm. practice facility. They don't anymore, but they did. They had a bunker yeah. um, in their practice area that had three different kinds of sand. That's the Rockland uh, Golf Club. If people, yes, are not the familiar. Rockland. Sorry, <laughs> Rockland Golf Club, the former yeah. Udaway Golf Club, yeah. but the yeah. Rockland Golf Club. Um, but yeah, they in the PJ down there. They had nine. Was it nine different? Yeah, nine nine different types of sand, so that you could get used to hitting out of different types of uh, bunkers and stuff like that. Crazy. And they had a couple of practice holes that are on the back side of that as well. So um, let's stay on that coast or come central. Okay. Uh, you know, we don't go too too long here or whatever. But uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, which which do you want to go at. Do you want to go Tampa, Orlando, first coast? Okay, which... no, Tampa. <laughs> Tampa. Tampa. Do Two go? things stand out in my mind with Tampa. <laughs> oh, three things, actually. There's the Sa- Saddlebrook Resort. Go. Yeah, exactly. Tampa Tom. Tampa Tom. And Ybor City. <laughs> Ah, nice. <laughs> those, are the, yeah. those are the three things that stick out the most okay. in my so, mind. Uh, you so know, my, flip... my 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 run in with Michael Jackson. <laughs> let's the round of to... golf with Tampa Tom, oh, and wow. uh, and the uh, Saddlebrook hot tub. All right, so let's <laughs> let <laughs> let's go northwest. We're going to okay. go towards Palm Harbor, which is uh, in the Tampa Bay area, just on the north side. Uh, obviously, Innisbrook and uh, Saddlebrook are both up there. Uh, Saddlebrook tends to be, you know, kind of underplayed most people are close to or, you know they're familiar with Innisbrook because obviously it's hosted you know PGA tour event and so forth mm-hmm. but Saddlebrook is a nice option uh from accommodations restaurants tennis courts golf as well um maybe a little bit less in price than Innisbrook but still nice options up there to play mm-hmm. um what's your memory as far as you know that area and, and our trip up there i mean you mentioned a couple of things and and, and i know i know okay. i don't know so, if i specifically want to get into them my wait, my memory wait. of that but uh the, i mean i i do know the the golf course we played 
um right at saddlebrook i th- yeah. think um i think your brother that, was with us yes my brother sean was yeah. with us on that we had one a, all sorts of little gators all over the place yes there that, was the uh, a yeah. lot of gators um yeah. Uh, the golf was was pretty decent. I mean, it yep. was it was um, a little bit more um, of your stereotypical Florida golf courses that we played there. You know, a little flatter, not a lot of elevation. You lots know, of water. Yeah, lots of water, lots of gators, kind of thing. Uh, yep. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's you know when I think back of it and thinking about that trip. I mean, we did St. Petersburg, Clearwater. Uh, yeah. I know I've been back to that area. There are now two top golfs in that area. Wow. Uh, there's a couple of decent muni golf courses over in St. Petersburg. We we played one was over there, and and we did play with a gentleman named Tampa Tom, who was very no memorable. lie, people. We're we're not kidding that, you. That this guy's his, name yeah, was Tampa Tom. Tampa Tom uh, ran a graphic design company. And he sent us some pretty funny gifts afterwards. We'll leave it a at very that. interesting T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. Um, but again, it was kind of neat as far as the characters that you. Go and find and i think the golf course was you know probably it was like 40 bucks or something to play that one uh fairly cheap but again you get you get the local texture and it was neat to be with those locals and hear yeah. sort of you know what they do what the golf course is about and i think that's one thing that we managed to do a lot over the years is sort of connect with the community and uh, unfortunately people this is you know pre-youtube years so it's not like yeah. a lot of other you know uh channels and stuff that would have you know a videographer following them for all this this thing or whatever but um it would have been some good content that's for sure um, oh but, no question but certainly again it's an area that you know a lot of canadians head over that coast uh whether it's you know dunedin area or whatever for the blue jays and, and things but uh, there is a lot of golf that, that can be played over there and you know when you are going off the golf course, as you mentioned, Ebor City, uh, which is a, f- we'll call it the, you know, the Tampa version of Bourbon Street, um, oh, which yes. was en- which was entertaining, uh, but some great restaurants, uh, Cuban influence, cigar, f- uh, you know, places, uh, you know, clubs, bars, and so forth, and just a lot of nightlife and stuff as well, and you know, very close as well to the. Uh, the little hub there that obviously has the um you know uh tampa you know the the lightnings as far as their arena uh everything sort of uh enclosed there so it's a spot not a lot of people get to i mean we went to the tpc there as well we have yeah, we yeah, played that sure. in, in in lutes um so there's there's definitely a golf trip that can be had there oh, for, for people sure. that are not necessarily going to to private clubs uh and you can get a lot of direct flights as well into tampa you don't necessarily have to go in orlando and then drive over and from a family perspective as well the you know bush gardens is over there yeah uh, so if you want to you want to do that have some family entertainment head out to the beach area st petersburg clearwater you've got that option as well so a lot of stuff going on there and as i said very very canadian friendly like i said dunedin up to port charlotte there's tons of canadians that are along there and uh some good golf to play as well so if you've got questions about that area yeah um you know just pass them along and and you know maybe we can provide some recommendations if if people are looking um yeah we'll go from there any yeah. any other ones or you want to leave that for another uh, we'll, leave, we'll leave that one for another time i mean obviously sure. we can jump into orlando orlando is kind of the big one for everybody uh yeah you know just uh uh, you know, lots of there's there's tons. Whether you're in the Orlando yep. proper, or Kissimmee, or yep. wherever you happen to be going in in that area, you've always got a lot of the family stuff with Disney, Disney and Universal Studios. Yeah, we could do we could do a whole show. And all that stuff. Yeah, it could be a Orlando, shows. but just some of the ones that stuck out in our minds. You know, obviously Orange County National, right? It's a big yep. one. Um, they they have had the uh, PJ final stage of PJ Tour Q School there in the past. Yep. And, um, we've played there uh, on a couple of occasions. Oh, yeah. That's where they always have the demo day, the outdoor mm-hmm. demo day for the PGA uh, merchandise show in January. Um, very unique driving range, uh, circular, multiple, Massive. multiple tee stuff. It's a huge area. Um, very cool. Um, but there's other there's other spots within Orlando yep. too. Um, and you know, we can't obviously, we don't have time to cover everything. Um, sure. yeah, we can do that as a separate yeah, show. Yeah. I think, I, I mean, I, I know for myself, I've, I've managed to expand kind of where I've played there over the years and I definitely, uh, can put together a little bit of a guide. We've got some Orlando stories that people can, you know, go oh, look at on our, on our website, but, uh, um, yeah, we've, 
was, you know, if you go to our website and look up things like Winter Park or Orange County National, yep. or Southern Dunes, you're, you're going to find stuff that's there. If you've got questions, just pass them along. Absolutely. Now, the last one, I guess we can just we can touch on, too, is the first coast of Florida. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. One of my favorite spots uh, of, of some of our, our trips to Florida that we've done is the was the first coast. Um, uh, you know, whether it's you have the opportunity to uh, to play sawgrass. Yeah, um that's crazy. always you know <laughs> yeah it was a little expensive uh, a little yeah, difficult way to, more now <laughs> you know you can't it's not easily accessible um to just the general public to book a tea time no um but it, if you it, get the it opportunity can, it can peak out as high as 900 dollars. yeah so if you get the opportunity to do it knock it off the bucket list and do it um love yeah, the golf cool. course but certainly not you know, in awe of, mm-hmm. of everything about the golf course other than 16, 17, 18. Sure. Um, but there are some good holes there. World Golf Village, which is now, no, you know, in, in St. Augustine, which is now moving. Yeah, the museum um, is the museum is moving. The The golf courses are, are going to be there, but the uh, the World Golf Hall of Fame is, is going to be moving uh, back to Pinehurst, where it used to be for years. So those golf courses were somewhat average, I would yeah. say. Now, Hammock Beach. Hmm. Yeah, that's a cool spot. Yes, very yeah. much so. We had a really interesting time. We were down there uh, when we were on our first first uh, coast uh, uh, Florida trip. Uh, Tony Harris, um, yep. renowned golf artist, yep, painter, very good friend, yep, uh, joined us on that particular part of our our trip in in Florida, and and uh, was with us at Sawgrass. Was mm-hmm. with us for our uh, our family uh, style. Oh, in Ferdinand uh, Beach, yep. yeah, family style um, dinner. Yep. The dinner where the big, huge, you know, every the fried chicken and the bowl <laughs> yeah. of corn and the mashed potato was just amazing. Yeah. Uh, and then the golf, we played the ocean yeah. course um, at Amelia Island, which is gone. Amelia Island, yeah, so which is gone. Too, which is too bad because yeah. that was uh, that golf course was especially the ocean course was awesome. Yeah, the Marsh um, Landing course is still there. It, it's it's a solid one for sure. And uh, the other thing I would say from there is that for people, uh, St. Augustine itself, really cool town. Yes, uh, a cool. lot of a lot of really uh, long Spanish roots that are there. Um, really neat with the cobblestone streets and everything just to walk around there uh, right along the A1A, right on the coast. And, you know, it's it's Plagger College is there. There's lots of different things. So, you know, it can be a hub as well for a place to golf. There's a couple other golf courses up there, too. We played a, a city of Jacksonville, had a golf yeah. course that we played played a St. John's County one that was really good for a, you know, for a public golf course. Uh, I forget the name of it off the top of my head, but I, I, I remember it being very reasonable and, and something that, you know, we rated fairly highly. Uh, so there's more and more of that up there as well. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a good spot, not just for, you know, TPC Sawgrass. Oh, definitely. Which, which obviously a lot of people will, will be the center of their attention, but just know there's a lot more options there. Yeah, for sure. I. Uh... Okay. Well, is there anything else we want to touch on with the with the Florida golf side of things? Obviously, we've we've been a number of times. We've been to various areas of Florida. If you're thinking of doing a Florida golf vacation, and you want uh, some insight, information, or advice, you know, feel free to reach out to us. We um, if we don't know because we, we haven't been out. to that area, I'm sure that uh, we've got the contacts to be able to find out things pretty quickly and easily. So uh, yeah, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You know, we're Nothing in it for us. No, but, we're not travel know. agents or consultants uh, no, with no, the no. big fees here. We just we just love people to have a good time golfing. So, yeah, um, sure. if we can help you out, well, then uh, let us know and we will help you out. You got it. All right. Well, you know what, Scott, I think that's a a good spot to finish this week, um, and we'll put a wrap on another great episode of Flagstick Podcast. Um, thanks to uh, our sponsors this week, Metcalf Golf Club. Celtic Golf Center, our presenting sponsor, the Canadian Pro Shop Online. We've got uh, they've got the golf gift everyone is talking about, especially around the holiday season. Introducing the Clubhouse Golf Box, amazing gift for the golfer on your list. Loaded with amazing golf products from top brands. Simply choose either the essential or the premium box. Choose the ship date, and they will fill the box with amazing products and ship it right to you or to your lucky recipient. Uh, gift giving has been made easy. Get yours or browse for other great golf gifts at the Canadian Pro Shop Online.com. Well, we hope that you've been enjoying uh, yet another episode, whether you're listening or watching. Be sure to follow us across all social media networks Instagram, X, Facebook, TikTok, Threads, 
and, and subscribe on Spotify, Audible, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like us and click the notification bell and make sure that you never miss a single episode. Uh, get over to flagstick.com for more amazing golf content every day and to subscribe to the Flagstick Digest newsletter. You don't mm-hmm. want to miss that. And uh, yes, we haven't forgotten for those people that signed up. Uh, we are making the draw. We'll announce the winner of the uh, RTX 6 Wedge. And next week, we will announce yet another giveaway. So Another giveaway? Yeah, yeah another giveaway. So you don't want to miss that. That is for sure. Well, we always appreciate you tuning in. And uh, until next week, I am Jeff Botter. And I'm Scott McLeod. Always remember, go for the stick.